Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Disclaimer, this video might be a little bit of a bummer. I'll try to leave it raw and unedited. I am talking about Wakanda Forever, which is basically Black Panther 2. Now, I'm going to try and get through this with some modicum of decorum, if that's how you say it, because holy shit, have I never been as angry and frustrated while watching a movie. Let's get out of the way. I'm not the biggest fan of the first Black Panther movie. However, I love Chadwick Boseman's portrayal of Black Panther in Civil War and in the Black Panther movie. I just thought the Black Panther movie was not a great movie and it tried too much with CGI spectacle type thing. However, it's one of those, I see why people love it in that sense. Look, I don't know much about Chaswick Boseman, they didn't at the time, but when I first saw him in Civil War, I knew I recognized him from somewhere. I think I might have watched what might be considered a B-movie at one point, and um, I did a tad bit of a little search on him, and I found some like behind-the-scenes stuff. Get to the point. Uh, Chadwick Boseman seemed to be a great human being who was a talented actor, and you just want to love the guy, give him a hug, that type of guy. You can just feel it when you watch him and stuff. So, in honor of his memory, I'll try to be as decent as I can, but in watching the first Black Panther movie, I saw that there was a disconnect from what I don't know what the Russo brothers did with him with Civil War. However, I'm not here to get too much on that, but to say, you know, it feels like his passing kind of taints the movie. And in context of my life and my connection to all this, I don't know how deep I'll get into that, but I don't know. So just want to, for a second, just pay some respects to him uh again he just seems like a beloved person who you just want to hang out with and hug and you can see what he would do for people in the community you just i get that instinct anyway let's move on to black panther 2 wakanda forever now i gotta admit i went into this with a decent mindset and a mood i thought so and as I start watching this movie, I started getting angry and heated. And I haven't gotten like this in a long time. And no, Demi, I'm not talking about you trying to buy me a present while drunk. That was from a place of love and it was giggles and it's just whatever. But this is something that grew on me for the first. 10 15 minutes and started building up i find this movie to be just sounds and distractions and it started annoying me but however this movie happens to have an actress of the name angela bassett now i probably had a crush on her from my teenage years just a stunning woman with awesome talent and if it wasn't for her, I probably would be ranting in a bad way about this movie. But so finally, they give Angela Bassett the stage to really elevate this movie, and they do. She's incredible in it. I'd like to see her in everything. Yes, it's a bias, let's say, but fine. I'm watching a movie that, spoiler alert, They want to put an exclamation point on the fact that Black Panther dies. And let's say the sister from the first movie, the tech girl, Shuri, whatever, 
He's trying to recreate the flower to cure him to some extent, and he dies. So, it's a way of saying Chadwick Boseman died, you know, his battle with cancer, so on and so forth. But it didn't sit well with me. Because as I'm dealing with that and trying to navigate a piece that is essentially, uh, you know, trying to pay homage to Chadwick Boseman because the, the whole Marvel intro with its logo is all Chadwick Boseman and I had a big smile on my face. Yes, it kind of might have been tinged with a little sadness, but again, I don't know much about him as an actor. Um, when I saw him in Civil War, I recognized him from somewhere, and then I went back and looked and was like, oh yeah, I know this guy. And then in some detail of him telling a story about Denzel Washington was at some um, school or something for some visit to see whatever and noticed Chadwick Boseman and went behind the scenes and paid for his tuition. Some story like that. And it made me tear up. You could just see you want to hang out with him and give him a hug and whatever. So I have a smile on my face and... This is, you know, we're going to pay homage to Chadwick Boseman and Black Panther. But as I said, this, the, after the opening scene of uh, T'Challa dying, the black, original Black Panther, whatever you want to call it, the movie just becomes like a white noise sound that grows on you like nails on a chalkboard. became overwhelming to me and I didn't and still might not understand why so we set up this movie who again directed by uh, Ryan Coogler this is in vain of the first one and again I'm not the biggest fan of the first movie it just might not be for me the CGI fest at the end I thought spoiled a lot it, it let the air out of the balloon a little but it's a fun movie for what it's worth and um, I don't feel it was honored in the right way. A lot of times there's a real delicate balance you have to take between tones in a movie. And my podcast with Thor movies might be closer to it where, you know, I, I talk about how in the first movie... He's an egotistical brat who gets to show him humility and humanity, and he grows from there. Now he's just a buffoonish whatever. And it works for the movie because the beats they take and stuff are done pretty well, where his father dies and he's got to mature. His eye gets taken out. He almost has to become a king. And there are those hints of it there. And I don't know what to say much about this, but you have the opportunity to do, probably do an hour and 45 minute character piece on Shuri led by the mother Angela Bassett who is a fucking queen in stature, physique w words everything she's fucking amazing but yet they want to go from this real serious tone of Chadwick Boseman paying homage to him dying and the Black Panther character do you want to do quips 10 minutes later and show this whatever and I didn't fucking like it and it started growing on me because there's sounds in the movie there's this fucking a cacophony of just distractions to me I mean I might get to this at the end of the podcast but I'll connect it maybe to other things However, I might have to chalk this up to, I have, I'm a fucking damaged human being. So first of all, is that. But I might have issues that connect to this movie and the whole thing with um, Chadwick Boseman that were underlying my motivations or attitudes before I knew about them. And yes, the brain can fucking be crazy and we are great at deceiving ourselves, so... I try to be honest about my feelings and make a critique about things, but I can't hear. So I'm going to distance myself from here and say, in a way, 
Black Panther 2 might be a fun round for people and a, and a good farewell to Chadwick Boseman in that sense. I'm going to disagree, but not take a stance because I'm way too caught up in my emotions and my um, anger. And, and I'm telling you, I got hot. Like, so, and this is some one of the weird, weird things about this movie is as I'm watching this movie and I'm doing my little notes thing, I start fucking paying attention, like setting up little things I might talk about in my podcast. And it's focused on Angela Bassett. And I'm like, you know what? This should have been a eight episode Disney series. And it should have been anchored by Angela Bassett. And you could have really showed Shuri's maturity, her um, quest to get over this thing where her brother dies, you know, and, and the Black Panther. And it's just something that I think would have fit better on that uh, small screen and in-depth story where you can take these beats and you can separate some of the humor you want to do and make a superhero movie. But you didn't, I don't think, and I'm not saying this is done as a evil thing or some mustache twirling thing, but I feel insulted, I think. You, you, you want this movie to be a, an homage to him, and you bookend the fucking movie with this. However, but what you do is, as my notes were fucking showing, is this movie progresses. And I've never seen a more uh, stunning, captivating performance from Angela Bassett that really elevates her. Because she elevates things, for me. And maybe if I did more of a history on her, I know why I know her from back in the day, where I had my crush. But I, I it just you're drawn to her, you want to fucking watch her. What do they do? Like an hour and 40 minutes, I am, I feel like I got a fever, I'm angry, the noises, everything in this movie is fucking annoying me, I don't have a clear path to a storyline that I'm attaching myself to, because I am fucking angry. I mean, I struggle with depression and things all my life now, and I have little tools that help me navigate this fucking craziness. And I needed everything. And I'm telling you, it ruined a good portion of a day. And I know I'm kind of beating around the bush here, but... Spoiler alert. They fucking kill Angela Bassett's character, the Queen of Wakanda. They fucking drown her in magic water fucking balloon explosion cubes. And then have the balls at the end of the fucking movie to have Shuri with Namor at her fucking mercy. And I understood what they were doing and I saw the connective tissue and I didn't fucking like it. Now, maybe there's some fucking behind the scenes shit like Harrison Ford and like Empire Strikes Back. It's like, oh, I want you to kill Harrison Ford. I want you to kill and Solo. And his whole fucking life, that's all he wanted. So when he came back to do The Force Awakens, they fucking killed him. And he's happy. You know, like, I don't know if Angela Bassett had a thing like, you know, I want this to be strong and I want my character to die here to be poignant. I don't know. But, you're trying to honor the memory of fucking Chadwick Boseman. The only clear fucking star in this movie is Angela Bassett. I don't care how talented the actress is for Shuri and fucking Kiki Williams and the Michonne fucking character from Walking Dead. It doesn't work. This should have been an hour and 45 minute movie character piece on Shuri earning this and then elevating the material with your fucking obvious staple here which is Angela Bassett so I'm writing fucking notes about this and they fucking kill her and then 
you want me to fucking have any connection and sympathy to this Namor character. Now, first off, if it's still the fucking law or rule, this is how it works. You can't have a Hulk movie standalone because Universal owns it and they own Namor. Why and how? Who the fuck knows? But it had to do with Marvel first getting into this movie business and that's why the rights for Spider-Man will never come back to them and things and so on and so forth. But here we are and it just fucking irks me. And by the way, again, I try to go with a mindset. Again, I will make a connection to this later maybe if I feel it deserves it, but this is a movie that gets too wily, too caught up in its own bullshit, and then tries to, at the end of the movie, have her earn this fucking title, and it's just hollow in almost every way. And the last fucking scene of this fucking movie is confusing and stupid, in a sense. Or next to the last, because... You want to show Chadwick Boseman again. And you show him smiling, going through all those things. And it felt insulting. I don't believe in stupid afterlife stuff and all that bullshit. And it's, oh, he's up there insulted. So it's not that. I, I don't have no fucking bullshit. I don't deal with that nonsense. But... This is, there's a point, I like, I'm not kidding, uh, the new Black Panther, Sherry, who earns her fucking bullshit at the end, gets a, a magical spear shoved through her stomach and better than a rock, as she's pinned there, and I don't know why, who made the fucking decision here, but she's gathering herself, right, she's doing her thing, and they start showing scenes of the movie in reverse. I don't know who the fuck wanted this concept in there that she's going to show memories of the movie, by the way, right? And have the scene do that someone's rewinding the film thing. These things are jarring and fucking annoying. Like this, I'm supposed to be in awe when Shuri is connecting with Namor and going to this Talakan, whatever the fuck it is, Atlantis. Oh no, it's not Atlantis, right? Because they got to have a fucking guy with a fucking connection to a different history. I'm fine with that. I didn't care. I think, they, like, I, I'm not, you know, I don't see no shit garbage performances. But nothing's earned, in my opinion. Because as much as you enjoy um, Shuri and some of the movies she's been in. And, like, uh, you know, connections to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I, never, I don't give a fuck. Sorry. To me, she was the tech person in the Wakanda universe, and it fit well. And one of the scenes at the end of the thing, she gets his gauntlets on, and, you know, showing that her tech, you know, whatever. And I, whatever. The fact that she's fucking 15 years old, isn't that movie? She's the head of a department. I don't like, whatever. But I, mean, I don't buy it. I didn't buy that payoff at the end. And I'm fucking angry and heated throughout the whole fucking movie noises that assault your fucking senses screeching fucking singing from water dwelling sirens i guess because you can't just have a fucking name or in it right you have to try to bring in his people like a tumor is in the fucking but who the fuck knew it was a tumor or whatever the fuck they call him and namora or whatever the fuck is going on here you couldn't have a quiet build-up and a earning of the Black Panther mantle. You wanted another spectacle in some of these parts. First off, you really want me to believe that the Black Panther new fucking synthesized formula can not only regenerate you with a hole in your fucking stomach, fine, it, it, it makes you a skilled fucking warrior, like, did they do the Matrix download, like, I know Kung Fu? But fine, she's from Wakanda, Wakanda, and she's trained since birth, she just likes tech stuff. I can suspend my disbelief, and I'm, I'm, I'm okay. 
But the segments of this movie, the pieces that build up to it, are just... And why fucking waste that guy from fucking... Played fucking Bilbo Baggins? Like, Julio Luis Dreyfus is like, wasted in this fucking movie. Why bother? Why not take this movie, take a fucking hour and 45 minutes of it, and fucking make something worthy of Chadwick Boseman's name? And if not his name, what he represented as Black Panther, because that's what you're going for, right? But you want to blend the two. And you want to pull on hard strings and, you know, make me feel attachment to it, which I already did. No, I got angrier and angrier. And the only fucking, the only thing that was keeping me afloat, my life preserver, was Angela Bassett. And when they came to the part in the movie, they fucking kill her. And, you know, we got to get Kiki Williams in it, you know, so she'd be Ironheart. We fucking dumb. You want Namor's fucking origin story, right? You want to give weight to his character and his history. And... What he might be for the future, fine. Because again, you can't make a Hulk movie and you can't make a Nemo movie, if I'm correct, and it's still part of the fucking rule. But guess what? When the Hulk came into the Avengers and he stole the show, Nemo doesn't do that here. You, you don't pull this off. And again, I'm going to fucking tr maybe connect this. I don't know if I'll cut it out or whatever the fuck I'm going to do. But my. Going into this movie, had no bad blood going in just in general that I knew about. So, again, uh, I might try to explain it, but for me, I, I struggle. I struggle every fucking day. Every fucking day. And this could be shit that I didn't realize that, you know, bubbled to the surface behind the scenes. Okay? And... I just want to enjoy a movie. These are my escapes from the movie. But you, you, you kind of connected too many things that try to fucking make a spectacular movie, you know, and it just doesn't work for me. I needed to be grounded and taken through a really deep story about the sister's maturity and growth the passing of Chadwick Boseman, and the mantle of the Black Panther. And it didn't fucking matter, did it? It didn't fucking matter because you had to kill Angela Bassett, and you had to have Shuri's I Got Nothing to Lose, Vengeance, and then the bullshit spirit scene where she doesn't see Chadwick Boseman, she sees fucking the jerk-off from the first movie. Um, Michael B. Jordan plays the character. What the fuck? I don't even care. Like, I get it, right? You want to pay? I don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Again, there's Chadwick Boseman didn't want his a CGI whatever of him. Anyway, I don't buy anything. I don't buy the fucking mantle. I don't buy the new suit. I don't buy anything. The only thing I bought in this fucking movie was Angela Bassett, as she could have been something I tethered to and weathered the storm with. I don't know, you want to argue about debating her fucking history and cinema? I don't know, whatever. I just know what pleases me and what makes me smile, what makes me happy. And she was the only fucking thing holding it together. Every fucking scene she's in. Even the stupid fucking ones. But damn it, when she comes in front of the government in the beginning of the movie, her physique, her body, her mannerisms, her fucking looks, her speech, is fucking gives this movie any amount of points. So whatever this movie gets as a fucking score, it gets an extra point. Whatever the fuck you want to do. Because she's just fucking amazing. Again, 15 minutes into the movie, noise and sounds are starting to annoy me. An hour into the fucking movie, you're all over the place. You got fucking people jumping into this movie like the Bilbo fucking character and, and Julia Lee Dreyfus is... Um, whatever fuck Fontaine they use in her character, Valentine, I don't know, whatever. Just, you know, what the fuck can you put Martin Freeman? That's his name, right? Martin, whatever the guy is, you know. Um, 
Sherlock and whatever. Just why? Like the connective tissues here is just bullshit. Like it just doesn't work and you're trying to filter in so many things, right? We got fucking you know, Shuri dealing with the fact that she can't save whatever and it's done in the beginning and it fucking hits you and pulls your heartstrings out and and you wanna what? You wanna know you wanna do a two hour and fifty fucking minute spectacle after that? Quirps, quips and whatever. By the way, you can do it and it's just to me it's done much better. And I'm gonna be honest, your fucking first movie got a pass, okay? For many reasons. And if one of them was the fact that Chadwick Boseman is just a beloved human being first and a talented as fuck actor second, that's fine. I mean, I get it. But this movie does not hold up. It, I don't feel... There's no weight here. You got fucking... You got fucking Julie Lee's Dreyfus and fucking the Martin Freeman Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. type angle, sword, whatever the fuck they're trying to do. And it's filtered through the movie, but then you want to do Kiki Williams and Ironheart, and you want to do this fucking other sex of the Wakandan government type thing, and it's just like, what? Text, like the, the contrivances, fucking, I mean, I've never gotten so angry and hot and heated. Again, this isn't because they killed Angela Bass, that's an hour and Half in the fucking movie. She's like the only thing holding me here. So. It didn't sit well with me in the beginning. Well actually I was smiling in the beginning. See. Alright look. There are subtleties. And things about the human brain. That I've come to understand. Maybe I'm just a little lucky. And, and, and unlucky. that uh, By the time I was 13. My mom had mental issues, and I started looking into psychology and stuff. But I recognize afterwards certain things, and I might discuss them. But I'm trying to at least say, taking my hate, my anger out, my almost hatred, because I was fucking livid, and I'm fucking angry even talking about this. I wanted to watch. Maybe a quiet, subtle movie of the new superhero being born. But then I wanted it to pay homage to Chadwick Boseman in a way that pleased me. I get it. But this jumble of me being fucking damaged, fucking human being, still struggling with everything in fucking life. I mean, to the day-to-day -day nonsense that we go through as human beings. To thinking I was ready to watch a fucking movie. To probably a halfway decent fun romp, romp for most people. I, I, can, I get it. But I got fucking angry at everything they started doing in this movie. And it culminates with them killing the Queen of Wakanda. And then setting up this bull fucking shit that I don't buy for a fucking second. Bullshit. I didn't buy it. I don't buy it now. Even looking back and understanding my maybe, um, you know, subtle cognitive shit that goes on in the brain afterwards. And uh, again, I don't want to shit on this movie. I want to pay homage to Chadwick Boseman and give the benefit of the doubt to to these writers and these directors and these actors and actresses because I'm sure they knew him better than me and loved him more than I did in that way I don't want to take that away from anybody but I'm sure it's shit not going to be dishonest these fucking podcasts are just bullshit me 40 minute bullshit to me and you know I'm not doing breakdowns and big huge discussions and having Fucking hundreds of people in life. Like, I, I, it's just not who I am. And <clears throat> this uh, motivation to come on here and shit on this movie in a way is not 
what I live for. It's not what I want to do. I want to be a kid. I role play. I play fucking games. I make up stories in my mind every fucking night. I'm the biggest nerd geek fucking, you know, that you can ever meet. And it's just fucking aggravating. Got me fucking angry throughout this whole movie. You're trying to do too many things in this bloated fucking, you know, spectacular thing that you're trying to do. And I don't fucking care. You didn't do Not Atlantis right. Granted, the fucking actor that played Nemo and the story they were going for worked for me in that sense. I'm a comic book geek. I know Nemo from the comics. But you know what? I would have taken a different fucking approach. I would not have used a Nemo who was fucking already king of his place. He, You never even saw his people. This would have been a character growth of Shuri and Nemo because you could have tied them both together. But no, you want to do his backstory. You want to do his childhood thing. What makes him a mutant and his people and why some are blue and he's not. And you want to... Okay, <clears throat> whatever. But you are adding that to Bilbo and fucking Elaine. And, you know, um, these subtleties and different things. Because Wakanda is under siege in a way. Because, uh, you know... America and other countries are trying to get their vibranium and let's get this fucking tech gadget that we don't know nothing about that was made by a young prodigy genius for a school project that the CIA is using to find vibranium. So they find it and it's in the water. Oh shit. Okay. What happened to these people? How did any of those people get like this? Let's go through that. Let's go through Sherry's growth and all her goings on. Let's go with the politics of nations really want vibranium. And Wakanda is not giving any of it away. That trading shit. So stop bothering. And you come fuck with us. And that's the only thing I liked about it was Angela Bassett telling everybody, listen, I will fuck you up. Anyway. Again, I'm trying to just give... A brief description, but try to separate my feelings from the uh, critique. And I hope I am just honest enough to, you know, even expose myself to this because it ruined half my maybe mo maybe more than half a day. I don't like going through this shit and dealing with it. And by the way, I've cried in movies that had a lot to do with personal real life stuff that mimic things that are going on i mean these are the things that make you connect to things right and i i understand that i watch them I, gr I go through the process this movie fucking like i swear i could have been radiating heat from my body i almost wanted to rip my fucking notepad as soon as they killed it because again like i said i'm jotting down notes about how this should have been a Eight thing series centered on Angela Bassett and the growth of Shuri. No, 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 you wanted to do a fucking movie. A fucking, what is it? Yeah, three hour fucking movie. And it opens up with only Chadwick Boseman in the scenes. Blah, 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 and it, it bookends it, it, with, with Shuri trying to sit by a campfire in the fucking beach. And that whole little fucking, oh, I want to do this alone. What do you fucking mean? When your friend comes to you that you took from the first movie that you bring out of nowhere, and everybody's got new armors and stuff, fine. And she says, okay, yeah, I'll be ready in two seconds. What were you going to do? Play checkers or something? Like, And so she sits by the fire, and it ends with Chadwick Boseman, his image in all the scenes he was in type thing. And it felt manipulated and fucking insulted. On a level I've never felt in a long time. <clears throat> this anger, this... And like Again, it might have been connecting and bringing out things under my... The layers of my shit. That I... That I who I am. And what I am. But I want to sit here and tell you that this fucking movie is a recommendation or not. And in that case, I'm going to say, yeah, look. I'm sure people... Who made this fucking movie love Chadwick Boseman and really wanted to pay homage and everybody did their best. 
to make this happen, and I'm totally understanding of that. And I'm going to separate myself and say most people will enjoy this for what it is, and I get it, but I can't honestly come on here and say that. I fucking so much want to bash shit and smash things. Like, it was fucking... It was an experience I don't want to go through again. And like I said, I've watched fucking things about real life stuff that connect to me. And again, it just, but maybe this is too personal and that I am the nerd. I am the geek. I, I role play Chitala in my head and put him in my adventures. And I write these fucking adventures my own. And I, and I have people go on them and interact with them. Part of the, when we did play a lot, part of the fun was when these movies came out. To have the characters who they're playing their own superheroes get to meet them. Thor, Black Panther, Captain America. And, you know, I could, it's so easy to invoke imagination and wonder in people when they're your players, when you have these awesome actors and people representing them. And you can, you know, like, I'm, uh, this is a, whatever, but I'm playing a game, whatever, and Ben Affleck came as Batman. And it was like a cool smile. To, like you could feel the connection because this is how it works, right? Anyway, I don't know. I'm I'm looking at a movie directed by Ryan Coogler. Like again, most of my shit that I talk about, I don't think anybody goes out to make a bad movie. And this is not a bad movie. I don't think. I, I really don't think it is. But it's a frustrating, fucking, disrespectful insulting movie when you are fucking trying to tell me in the beginning think about Chadwick Boseman what a beautiful human he was bring it into the movie it's like I said the credits are redone the Marvel logo for Chadwick Boseman fucking awesome I'm smiling and I'm in that melancholy wonder you know of what they're doing then you open the movie and it's like you know, ER, triage, fucking what's going on? Oh, well, we, the king is dying, where we go? you can't save him, whatever the fuck. You're like, whoa, what? Holy shit. What am I going to get now? And every fucking thing afterwards was just fucking anger-inducing fucking nonsense that I didn't want to deal with. And again, I know it's my expectations, it's my damaged fucking brain and the things I've been through and it didn't go my way and most movies I can recognize that and chuckle but I can't with this movie and I don't want to you know take away from people who really knew and loved him and and these actors and the director you know I want to applaud them give them a hug I don't want to fucking sit here and you know shit on it because I think these decisions were horrible okay you didn't do good enough to focus on not Atlantis and Namor and his people and his quest and his struggles and you didn't bookend that well or intertwine it well with Shuri's fucking growth and her fucking whatever because I don't buy it I don't buy it to the end of the movie I don't buy it even now taking time and you know thinking about things I don't buy it I don't fucking buy it and I don't want to deal with the bullshit. So, is this a recommendation for a new fucking thing? Maybe. Like a new way of doing my podcast? I don't know. But, this is not, for me, a fun, entertaining movie. It wasn't. The whole experience was garbage. So, I do recommend it because people's labor of love should be seen and respected in that sense. and. Art is art type shit, you know, it's subjective and whatever. Have fun watching this movie and really get what you can out of it, you know, so. I don't know. It wasn't an enjoyable fucking movie for me. Maybe I have to watch it with certain people and different, like, I don't know, but. Oh, boy. There's a little bit of a connection I might want to get into here, so if you don't want to be bummed out or whatever the fuck, just. End it here, and my best to you and yours, and I love you all, but 
looking back and doing my own meditation stuff and introspective thing, there are, there are two facets here that I think are very important because these things aren't really my entertainment podcast that I want to become famous for. I think coming down to it is more of just leaving a part of me behind or, you know, just what my processes are and my what makes me happy and the things I look forward to and enjoy and, you know, movies and TV and science stuff really gets me in. So, uh, not many people maybe watch my shit to begin with or listen and then they don't go and know, see my personal playlist and anyway. My fiance for 13 out of the 17 years we were together fought cancer and lost that battle in around 2016 17. And it nearly killed me, destroyed me. And the fact is, I'm lucky to be here. And I'm thankful for all the friends and family who pulled me through this shit. And it was only the last in a fucking stretching back to history of my youth bullshit that we go through and i'm not special and i wasn't treated so much differently i'm like whatever just honest on who i am now so we have that and i think because i had a crush on angela bassett since i was you know teenager that michelle looks like her and reminds me of her so there's that connection i do have a um, a deep, weird love for Angela Bassett, and there is a psychological thing with why we something we attach ourselves to actors and actresses, and they bypass certain filters in the brain and become one of those names that you remember that, and they're like a friend or like they're like family, and so you want to add that and muddy the waters with that fine, but there's that connection there. She reminds me of my fiance. And now we get to the connection of my fiance fought cancer for 13 of the 17 years we were together and Chad McBoseman's silent fight with cancer, calling cancer, and him dying. And I think this is just a bad mixture of, I don't know, because like I said, I go into these things, I do my meditations, and I breathe, I focus, and I do my you know, I have my tools that help me, but I had no indication I was in a quote unquote bad mood or I was already, you know, whatever. But these subtleties have to be recognized for me as a person because this is what I do for me and I hope to try to do it for my friends. I just know a little bit about this stuff. For 16, 20 years, I, or more, what am I talking about? More that I've been fascinated with it. So just the fact that I was going to watch a Black Panther movie already could have keyed up things i'm not in control of that's how this human brain works and looking back at me watching this movie was i already setting myself up the fact that i was smiling when you and i saw him in this movie i think should have been a key that this means more to me than just superheroes but Again, this is the problem for me. It's These are my escape movies. And already, maybe I keyed up myself to feel for him and his situation and his family and what I went through. And then, in the middle of the movie, towards the end, you kill Angela Bassett, you drown her, and the fucking guy who drowns her with these magic water... Because, by the way, there's no magic... There's no Aquaman mirror water controlling aspect there's no leviathans and kaiju whatever that raises what like, there's no all, all we know is wakanda walls are bursting open with huge fucking water things and like wow and then they have these little boxes that water explodes anyway it looks like they're in a fucking wakandan tower that gets put underwater by magic cube explosions so Angela Bassett, and then at the end of the movie, Shuri's got to rise above it all, right? She's got to be the Black Panther, and she lets Namor live, and she's seen the flashback. And like I said, someone, 
I don't know, someone decided to do reverse fucking footage stuff, and it was fucking, just, it was just fucking, I've never been pulled out of a movie harder in my life, so, again, I'm connecting all this afterwards that I and most humans develop skills, I, I, I gave this advice once to a friend who I love dearly, that the skills behaviors we learn and we use and mold to ourselves to get through these things in our life can become detriments as we get older and grow and learn from those things. And these defense mechanisms, these cognitive processes, these heuristics we have in our brains who makes us what we are, we are the momentum of all our experiences underline everything we do. And the brain works 24 hours a day. It doesn't stop. I've said this before. It even has to paralyze you when you sleep. So I'm trying to come to the point that I have way too much emotional ties to every aspect of this movie that is gut-wrenchingly traumatic and experienced with me. And I didn't maybe notice these things. I didn't look for them. I didn't, um, you know, look to have it muddy the waters here and cloud my judgment, but maybe it did. And for that, I apologize. Like, I don't know what to say. I, I don't want to come on here. And like I said, uh, there were fan fiction movies, fan films that I've done. And, you know, I don't know what to say. I, I don't want to... People have passions and they I know they loved him and I don't want to shit on it for that I don't I would like to be hopefully smart enough and introspective enough to say I can critique this movie and say it's a bloated mess of great points they tried to make it just didn't you know it didn't hit the finish line and on a real fucking strong point. But is it a fun movie to watch? Perhaps. I don't know if I'll ever watch this movie again. I'm going to be honest. And if you ask me. You took this movie. This opportunity to do Wakanda Black Panther 2. And you've actually relegated this to non-existent. Intertwining twining stuff. Because I don't see this movie getting another movie. I don't care how much movie money it made. All I see is these characters filtered into the Marvel Universe with some backdrop. And it's kind of sad because Angela Bassett was the person for that. So I think this should have been a limited series. It should have been eight episodes where we could have seen everything. You, know, you could have had two fucking episodes just to name more. Right? And a real growth of Shuri and her maturity. Again, maybe this is my biases I just talked about. But I don't buy anything in this fucking movie. Her growth, her fucking struggles, nothing. I don't buy it. The biggest fucking thing I could say works for me is the Queen and Michonne. Where she's like, hey, you fucking worked for that asshole who killed, you know, like people. And you were like, well, fuck it. You know, I served the throne. So Michael J., whatever the fuck his name is, the villain from the first movie. Like, I, that whole thing worked. It was fucking awesome. Because it's fucking real. It like, was like people were thinking when you're watching that first movie. They have tribal things they have to do. T'Challa lost. New King is there. It, it, to Michonne's character, it didn't matter. He was an evil fuck. She has to serve the throne by right by combat. He want, and Angela Bassett brings that out here. But the irony and things, it works here. Because it's her fucking, she's the ruler, it's her laws, it's her tribal customs. And it was just a look at the frustrating love they had for each other and respect. And now it's like, no, enough. You took my daughter and she got kidnapped. It was a whole fucking thing where she goes to fucking not Atlantis. And anyway, uh, I don't know. I'm a mess. This is a fucking anger fest for me that I just tried to work through and 
understand myself better as a human being. I've said this before, little hints, that these podcasts are really therapy for me. And in that case, maybe it helps people to realize that no matter what you fucking go through, you know, we're going to have these stumbling blocks, and but we'll get through. And even when we look for things like movies that bring us out, don't be surprised that you're deceiving yourself, that these are all connections, real strong ones too, that tie you to these things and the surroundings and the context of the, how the movie was made and who was in it, who passed away, like all these things. And it leaves me wondering. Watch Black Panther too. I will recommend it for that. I don't see this as a, you know, insult now in that sense, but I was really fucking angry about it. I'll talk to you all next time. Take care, everybody.